Hello everyone, how are you doing? We're going to do our third installment of the rig rundown series we've been doing and today we're going to talk about guitar effects pedals. It's going to be my pedal board. You know, I'm a producer, but I'm a producer that mainly regarded himself as a musician early on. And now that my role has evolved over the years, I still find myself playing on a lot of the records that I produce. So we're going to talk about my pedal board today. And we're going to start with the most important pedal, the Strymon Iridium. Okay, so the Strymon Iridium, it's an amp simulation and a cab simulation, which is important for me because I'm not out in the room, you know, with the band like you might see in a movie or a music video or something like that. Since I'm producing and engineering the record, I've got to be stuck in this little room. So going direct is really important for me and you need something convincing and that one really is a convincing amp simulation. You got three settings for the amps. You got like a Fender Deluxe, a Vox sound, and like a Marshall Plexi type of sound. Three cabinet selections for each one. It's a really cool pedal. And that leads us to the first proper, let's say, effects pedal on the board, the Electro Harmonics Micropog. The Micropog, it's just an octave pedal. You know, you've got octave up, octave down, but that's a really cool one. You know, you can do the stuff that you would hear in the 70s, those cool guitar solos where you have the octave thing on it, but also you can create some pretty nuanced sounds, have your guitar sound something like a 12 string, the options are pretty endless. That leads us to the next pedal, which is Earthquaker Devices Plumes. The Plumes pedal, that brings us to Overdrive. We all love Overdrive. And that's a really cool one because it has three different Overdrive types that you can choose from, which is really versatile. You know, for someone like me, I'm going to get most of my overdrive from my amp, or in this case an amp simulation. So having just one pedal instead of a bunch of pedals that are doing different kinds of overdrive is really nice and convenient for me. And that leads us to the new pedal, the Electro Harmonics Fuzz Face Mini. So the Fuzz Face, this is a iconic pedal. I mean, everybody needs to have fuzz on their pedal board, right? Sometimes you just need that sound, but that's a really cool one. It's historic. You know, Jimi Hendrix and countless other people have used that one. There's plenty of fuzz pedals out there, but that's a pretty classic one to have on your pedal board. And that leads us to the next pedal, perhaps a little more interesting, the Electro Harmonics Lester K. So the Lester K, basically what that is, is starting the modulation section of my pedal board, and it's simulating the old Leslie speaker that, uh, that the B3 organs would run through, where the speaker spins around and around and it creates this washy modulation effect. Like I say, it's mostly used for organs, but you know, back in the 70s, guitarists started figuring out that it would be cool if they plugged their guitar into the Leslie speaker. Well, I have one of those in the big room, but it's not too convenient when you're trying to record music right here in the control room. So that pedal simulates that Leslie speaker sound. It sounds great on guitar. And that leads us next to the Fender Traverb. All right, the Traverb, another modulation effect. It does have reverb on it. I don't use the reverb too much because we'll, we'll get to that later. I have another pedal for that, but it actually is a great reverb pedal. But I mainly use it for the tremolo effect, another kind of modulation effect. That's very often something you would see on the old Fender amps, This what they call the speed control or on a Vox amp, the tremolo effect. And it has three different styles of tremolo, and that's a very important sound that's used a lot today. Even though it's kind of an old vintage sound, it's still something that we use a lot today. And for me, it's something I have to have. And so I love that pedal for that. And then we move up to the uh, pedal right above it, and it's the MXR Univide. The 
the Univibe. This, we're still in the land of modulation, okay? Uh, when you're trying to create those cool texture sounds, you know, these are the kinds of pedals that you're stepping on and, you know, turning on and off and setting the levels and all that good stuff. Univibe is a very old kind of modulation effect. Again, we've brought up Jimi Hendrix, but you hear uh, Univibe on a, a lot of those old Jimi Hendrix records and countless other records too. It's a really cool sound. It's hard to describe, but this creates a, a strange sort of uh, movement and modulation in the sound. It's really neat, which leads us to yet another modulation uh, pedal, the MXR Phase 90. The EVH Phase 90, I might say, if you look at it, it's got all those cool Eddie Van Halen stripes and so on and so forth that became iconic uh, when we think about Eddie Van Halen and his guitars. It is just a Phase 90 pedal. It's not modded in any different way, but you know, it looks cool. So that's the one that we got. And you do think about a phaser, you know, being that sort of modulation that you associate with rock and roll, you know, like Eddie Van Halen and, and other rock and roll guitar players as well. But you know, uh, what people forget a lot of, those old Waylon Jennings records had phaser all over them. And so that's a really versatile pedal to have on the board, the MXR Phase 90. And that leads us to another pedal on my board, this Strymon Deco. <laughs> So the Strymon Deco, it's a really cool pedal. It's hard to describe what it is exactly. It does several things. Uh, one of the things it does is it creates kind of a tape saturation effect. Uh, the way that we used to make records is you would record a signal and you would push it into the tape such that it would begin to distort a little, not really so much audibly, but uh, in a subtle way. And it just made everything sound great. So that creates that effect for you right there on your pedal board. But it also creates what we call a tape coursing effect. So it's still kind of a modulation uh, section of my pedal board. And uh, you know, course is an important effect to have. And a lot of times, and particularly in the early days, uh, you didn't just have course effects units. You made that, that sound effect with, with tape machines. And so it simulates that and it's a great sounding course. And then not only that, you can really dial in how warbly and so forth that that, uh, that, that course effect is. It's a pretty cool pedal. You should check it out. It leads us to the next spot on the pedal board, the MXR Carbon Copy Deluxe. The Carbon Copy, what is that? Well, it's a delay pedal. <laughs> Every guitarist needs a delay pedal on their board, and that is a really neat one. A lot of people use the Carbon Copy. Uh, you can do all the stuff you can do on any delay pedal, set how many repeats and how fast, and you can, that one's nice because you can tap in the tempo, which is really helpful, particularly when you're playing live with it. I don't really do that so much, uh, but it is nice to be able to just tap out that tempo that's really great. And another feature on that delay pedal that I think is super cool, this is a trick with a lot of times we've done in the studio, like when mixing, but you can do it right here off your pedal board. You can modulate, kind of uh, chorus out, let's say, the, the repeats on that delay, so it kind of creates a, a different kind of sound when it's repeating. It's really neat. A very cool pedal, the Carbon Copy. That leads us to the final pedal on the board, the Electro Harmonics Holy Grail. The Holy Grail, what is that? It's a reverb pedal, right? Everybody has to have a reverb pedal. Guitar players definitely need one. This is a nice one, it's got three different uh, types of reverb on. It's got a spring reverb, which for me is a workhorse. That's the kind of reverb you would have on your Fender amp or whatever amp that you like. Uh, that's the kind that I generally use. But you've got a hall setting, which can give you a more lush kind of reverb sound, which is cool for certain kinds of things, certain kind of maybe ambient textures you're trying to create. And then they have kind of a non-linear reverb sound. You can do some stranger things with that setting. And uh, anyway, yeah, the Holy Grail, gotta have a reverb pedal, the Holy Grail. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is fun. You know, I, we're all kind of gear nerds, and so it's fun to go through all this stuff. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, make comments about other stuff that you might like to see. We've got a ton of stuff in here, basses and uh, microphones and studio uh, preamps and all kinds of cool stuff. Make some comments about the kinds of things you want to see, and we'll see you next time.